All right, let's check out what's going on with KDA. So at the time of recording this video, you can see we have fallen out of the bottom of this bear flag. Now, I had this drawn slightly different before. We actually connected it to the bodies, uh, but even giving KDA the benefit of the doubt and drawing it to the utmost wicks that we've had to the downside, uh, you can see that we are currently falling below it. Now, I'm not necessarily too worried about a wick below the trend line, but the fact that we are seeing lower time frames bearish momentum really, really starting to accumulate. On the four hourly time frame, you know, we talked about this in the past couple of videos, but we keep on having these fake outs where, you know, the momentum starts to subside for a day or so. Well, this is on the four hourly time frame. So on the four hourly, you know, momentum starts to subside. And uh, I, I honestly haven't seen the squeeze bomb like this before, where it just goes, you know, bullish, bearish, bullish, bearish, bullish, bearish, bullish. So I, I think we should look at the squeeze bomb on a higher time frame. Nonetheless, you know, looking at the four hours, seeing all these fake outs to the upside and then, you know, continuing momentum to the downside is not good at all. Now, I talked about this in my last video and the last couple of videos, and I said this multiple times. I think I probably said it like five times in the last video, but once again, I was saying and hammering in the fact that the trend is your friend until the end, and I said, you know, we can't get bullish on KDA while it's in this bearish phase. It's much better to buy a confirmed breakout, and we were talking about this when we were in this bearish uh, bear flag. I was saying, you know, if we come down, back test this and break out the top of this, then so be it. I'd rather buy the confirmed breakout than just blindly DCA while we are in a clear bearish stance. Now, in the more macro term, I do believe KDA is about to have a bottom, and we talked about this when we were all the way over here on the 8th of April. Uh, if you've been watching my KDA videos for how long has this been now? It's been a little while, hasn't it? Oh, it's only been 16 days. I guess time time goes uh, time goes fast. Um, but nonetheless, for the past 16 days, if you watch this video, you know when we did have a breakdown, we were predicting almost a 32% drop to the downside. We currently only have you know 8.5% to go on this 32% move. We've already come down 25%. So we've pretty much hit my target down here. Uh, I am still sitting on the sidelines because like I said, you know, the trend is your friend until the end and as of the time of recording this, the trend is super bearish. So once again, I would much rather buy a confirmed breakout, you know, whether we come down to these levels and put in, you know, an inverse head and shoulders like a bottoming signal and then have a breakout, you know, I'd much rather buy at those regions once again than blindly DCA. I keep on hammering in this fact that the trend is your friend. And, you know, we, we talked about this on the daily. We're coming up into the EMAs, getting rejections. We were breaking down uh, from this bearish pennant. We were break, well, we're now breaking down uh, through the bottom of this bear flag. So I don't necessarily think that we do have to come all the way down to my price target at 440. Uh, the only real thing that I'm trying to say is, you know, that once again, the trend is your friend. The trend has been bearish since we were all the way up here at $6.40. I still do think there is a good likelihood we are coming down to $4.40. However, you know, we've already come down, you know, what was it again? Was it 25? We've come down 25% already. So what I'm personally looking for now is a bottoming signal to come into play for KDA within the next 8 to 8 to 8.5% 8 drop. I don't know why that is so hard to say. Nonetheless, we have strong support down here on these wicks. I do not believe we have too much support beneath that. If I draw to the candle body close, do we have any more 786s? No, we've, we've already drawn this 786 fib and we had a big, big rejection. So, you know, from a technical perspective, this, this was a trend over multiple weeks. So I think the weekly best defines it. Um, I mean, it's coming into Sunday now and a weekly close below the 786 is not going to look good at all, in my opinion. However, $4.40, there is a strong area of support down there. We need to bounce on that region and we need to do something like this. Like we need to have like a V-shaped recovery or we need to, you know, very, very quickly W out of these regions because the longer we're putting in, you know, daily closes, weekly closes below our last line in the sand, which is your 786 Fibonacci, then the worst it's going to be. And once again, in the much higher time frames like, like the weekly, you can see we are having this bullish momentum shift, which is why I do think at some point 
and you know when I say at some point it could mean you know in the next four hours it could mean in the next week it could mean in the next two weeks however once again the trend is your friend until the end I do think we are going to have a reversal at some point soon however I'm not willing to just blindly DCA in while we're clearly in a super bearish stance even if you know once again we talked about this in the last video and obviously the price target from yesterday if we broke out we would have done something like this uh, if we break out once again Today we're getting a cheaper price target if we break out, tomorrow we'll get a cheaper price target if we break out. The price targets keep on becoming exponentially cheaper, which is why I think sitting on the sidelines and using TA and momentum indicators is much more you know, easier than just DCAing. For me, I really only DCA Bitcoin. I don't think it's worth you know, DCAing altcoins unless you plan on holding onto them for years and years and years. And I don't necessarily think that you know, any of the people that watch my KDA videos are going to be like, oh, I'm going to hodl KDA for the next five years. And I'm sure even if there are people that say that, you'll probably be selling in the next year for the next shitcoin, let's be honest. <laughs> but uh, yeah, nonetheless, I mean, the, the, the phase is still bearish. Once again, trend is your friend. We're in a bearish stance. I think we're still going to have a good chance to come down to $4.40. However, the macro indicators are telling us that a momentum shift is very, very near. However, you can see these, these momentum shifts don't always happen straight away. Sometimes they take a lot of time. So I will be sitting on the sidelines for this once again. I'm hoping for a big bounce on $4.40. That is really your last line in the sand. Honestly, I, I can't even sugarcoat it. We, we really don't have any support once we break below this level. I mean, we've got a low down here, resistance, resistance. I'd say this would be the next point of control to keep your eyes on. And this is down here at $2.15. Once again, I don't think we're going down that low unless Bitcoin decides to fall off the face of this earth. But, you know, once again, we're, we're in a bearish stance. So I'm just going to sit on the sidelines. That is all I see. Once again, I will give you an update if we do come down to my price target. I'll give you an update if we break out and I will update you when I do switch my stance over to a more bullish stance. In the short term, it's not looking good for me. That is all I see for KDA. Once again, best of luck if you're in it. None of this is financial advice. It is just my opinion on the market. And yeah, you've always got to do what's best for you. Cowboy up. Peace.